Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today we're trading Dumba. I have an article that shows you why we're doing that. We're going to look at a bunch of stuff to do with Dumba, and I think six or seven teams you may go to. So stick around. Sub your, subscribe. My son tells me I shouldn't say sub yourself up. I should say subscribe to the channel because some people won't know what I'm saying. And if you are those people, I apologize. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and then you can have all the frolic. You probably don't know what frolic is either. I'm not going to explain it. Okay. <laughs> people ask me what my favorite team is and because uh, I wear my Hartford hat. I am a Carolina fan. I like the Edmonton Oilers and the Philadelphia Flyers. They're big. For my team, I also like Ottawa now. I like all the teams, really, honestly. I just love hockey in general. But sometimes I have favorite teams at the moment. Right now I love Ottawa. I like Florida because anybody with the Kachuk, I'm in there. I like you. You're, you're my type of team right there. So... Those are my kind of favorite teams, I guess. All right, we better get in this because we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff to do with Matthew Dumba. Most interesting character. And uh, again, we're going to be looking at why possibly he could be traded uh, from an article from Pro Hockey Rumors that I really like. Um, I think it's a, it's a great publication. Usually it's got a lot of backing to what it says. It just doesn't talk out of his butt. But before this goes way too long, go check out Steel Flyers All Sports Network. My swag. You're going to be able to see this Perlo Wisdom show. I do. I do. Uh, I'm the Perlo Wisdom show. And uh, I'm going to have a whole bunch of swag that you can buy with this. This me here. See that? Uh, should have a Hartford hat. And uh, so you can go find that over there. Plus a lot of great content. If you like all sports, all four major sports. And the teams within those sports, you'll like the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Also, I'm going to be live with Peyton on the radio, Off the Wall Hockey, all of that doing hockey analysis as they do their fine play-by-play -play all season long. Subscribe. You're going to want to be part of it. I know you are. Okay. Where did you go? There you go. This is the article in question. Snapshots Dumba by John Gilroy from Pro Hockey Rumors. Generally, when thinking of Minnesota Wild, you think of Kirill Kaprizov. Of course, he's a superstar on that team. However, the team's defensive core has been together for several years. It certainly has. Spurgeon, Brody, and Dumba absolutely uh been like that, those three have been on that team for quite a while. Dumba spent parts of nine seasons in the NHL, all wearing a wild uniform. Uh, but, but for much of it, his name has been circulating in the rumor mill. This is true. And before I go on with the article, um, this organization went through hoops to keep Dumba. They gave up like Tuck to Vegas to keep him. And I think it, um, like a high pick or another player. Help me out there, Minnesota fans, what it was. It was a big package so that they wouldn't have to give up Dumba. Like, talk. Really? And then the previous draft, they also did some philangling with uh, Seattle. Gave up Susie and a pick or something like that to make sure they kept Dumba. This is a team that's really, really liked Dumba. Um, I, I don't know if it's character, maybe his... Uh, his social awareness that he does with the, uh, you know, all the things that Dumba is part of it. He's very vocal socially and a human ambassador, or at least tries to be, however you wish to look at that. And maybe they appreciate that. But um, the athletic Michael Russo, the athletic subscription, subscri uh, subscription is necessary for the athletic, but it's a great subscription. I own it. I would highly recommend you get you take a look at it. It's not much, like 70 bucks a year. Had a chance to talk with Dumba recently, who opened up 
about the possibility of being traded and is a pending free agency. Uh, especially as it is with Minnesota's. The defenseman made clear he wants to stay and is focused on being the best player and leader he can be, allowing it to work out as it does. While GM Bill Guerin, however, didn't seem as optimistic. Reiterating that the organization has difficult cap position, which makes it hard to do certain things, in quotes. That's funny that Bill Guerin would say hard to do certain things, specifically involving the conversation of Matthew Dumba. Uh, the Wild had not begun engaging in Dumba extensions yet. Uh, notably, the Wild are set to carry a 12.7 million and a 14.7 million over the next two years in the buyouts of Parise and Ryan Suter. Though they if you will, we're going to look at the Minnesota situation, and technically, they would be able to afford Dumba. They'll have to be smart with the use of their cap and with defensemen coming off a six million AAV pipeline could be loaded, and the pipeline being loaded with defensive talent. We'll take a look at that too. They may not necessarily make the most sense. It's funny uh, when you're looking at these things and you listen to like Sportsnet and these big publications, they use these things all the time. It might not be the most sense, all of that stuff. I even know this is not really direct. They don't really tell you anything. Well, they do, but they don't tell you directly because apparently people don't like people with opinions. So maybe that's why nobody subscribes to my channel. I like people with opinions. So let me know in the comment section what your opinion is. And yes, I may disagree with you in the comment section and say something, blah, 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 blah. Okay? You can say something back and we can be amicable about it. And we can talk about it. We cannot be. It doesn't matter. I like people to have an opinion. And I don't care if you argue with me. Let me know down there. Okay. So let's look at Matthew Dumba. The player. It's from Regina, Saskatchewan. That's going to come in handy as we look at some of the places he may go. Big bonus. He's from Regina, Saskatchewan for a few teams out there. I'll tell you that right now. He's 28 years old, six feet. He's not a big guy, but he plays a lot bigger than he is. Uh, he's considered an offensive defenseman. He's been on a, you know, all the money, $6 million, was probably what he was worth the whole time up until now. And he's been around the league for quite some time. He has 519 games played, 222 points. Uh, although he's considered an offensive defenseman, he didn't really put up stupendous offensive numbers. However, if you notice with this, and this is what a lot of teams still enjoy, and should to a certain degree, he puts up a healthy amount of penalty minutes. He does get in there physically, no doubt about that. He doesn't back down from anybody. He plays, he does play hard, and he plays a difficult brand of hockey. Now, analytically speaking, and for me, I test, and for a lot of Minnesota Wild fans out there, he uh, isn't a very good defensive defenseman. I talk to Minnesota Wild fans all the time. If you do a, if you do, if I do a video on who they most likely would see be, be see, see be traded or most like to be traded, a large number of Minnesota fans will mention Dumba in the as a team player that they would like to see traded for his defensive woes. Um, yeah, he's not very good defensively, and he's not. But in, in, to me, he's not that great offensively. So as you can see, I'm not high on picking up a guy like Dumbo. But here's the thing. He skates extremely well. He plays physical. He's strong. He's, you know, fairly big. And he does move the puck out of his own fast when he doesn't get picked off really well. And he can quarterback a power play. Okay, those are all big assets for teams out there right off the get-go. And a lot of teams, most teams, if they will see a player like this and say that he's got all the tools. Remember, he's only 28 years old. He's only 28. Seems like he's been in the league forever. And he's only 28 years old. 
there is surely going to be teams out there that say, we can get the best out of this guy. He's got all the tools. When, it, when a player has all the tools, teams out there, teams out there want that player. They'll, we'll work with him. He's 28. He's still got a lot of room to grow, all of those sort of things like that. There's going to be teams that are going to be after Dumba, no doubt about it. And we're going to look at what those teams, some of those teams may be. Uh, what I think, we got about seven teams that may me not after him, but I think would most likely be on the phone a little bit. Now, Minnesota, if they were to move Dumba, I say that Dumba probably would move closer to the deadline. Unless, uh, you know, maybe something can be done before then. And the big thing about that, of course, is that Minnesota is probably going to be in a playoff spot or in a, you know, there's a, I think it's pretty, very, very, very likely that they're going to be a, bu a bubble team at worst and in a playoff spot at the time. So moving a player like Dumba is going to be a little edgy in the room. You know what I mean? Like, what are we doing? We're moving. This is our players understand players by skill physicality, all of those sort of things like that. Honestly, it's weird. A lot of players don't really pay attention too much to defensively poor play. I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, even analytically strong players sometimes don't realize that another player is not really as good as they think they are. Matthew, Matt Dumba is also a leader in the room. So trading him at the deadline could be a little difficult. But I think what will happen is, if they do do this, is they'll get another right defenseman back and some packages for later. Something like that. Because unless Kalen Addison really blows everybody out of the water, and that's possible, and... Maybe Carson Lambos or Ryan O'Rourke show that they're ready. Ryan O'Rourke could be, I suppose. Or one of their uh, training camp guys. Uh, you know, like Joe Hicketts, probably not ready. There's not too many guys that can take their spot right now. Um, the, I, I think Matt Dumbo would be difficult. Kalen Addison would have to move up. Goligoski can move effortlessly to the right side. I love that guy for that reason. He's amazing on both sides of right or D. It's like no difference to him. And then they can move a uh, defense. They could actually get a left defenseman in return here too. So we'll take a look at that. Goligoski moves to the right side. It's easier to get a left defenseman and uh, could work out that way as well. So that's what I think Minnesota is going to be looking for. The forward group, there's no room. Like there's, there's still lots of young players coming up. Uh, they went out and got Sam Steele. There's no room really for more forwards here, I don't think, especially when Greenway comes back. Plus, you got John Merrill possibly coming back down the road, and he had a really good year last year. Okay, so that's a look at all of Minnesota. That's a look at uh, what you're getting in Dumba. So let's look at which teams might end up with somebody like Matt Dumba. Oh yeah, I'm starting out with the Seattle Kraken, who, by the way, are not stellar in cap space all of a sudden after picking up uh, guys like Oliver Bjorkstrand and Andre Burakovsky. However, by the deadline, this, uh, this probably, they'll probably have more cap space. You just have injuries, sending people up and down, play, teams make cap space. And I didn't mention this with the Minnesota in while talking about this. The Minnesota Wild can retain here for this year. So Dumba is a free agent at the end of the year. So they can retain to bring in another player as well. So now I have Seattle as one of the least likely out of the people that could do it. Simple as the teams that could do it simply because it, I still don't think it's very likely they're going to be you know, hedging for a playoff spot come playoff time. Could be wrong. They did build up a lot of offense here. They they have a lot more offense. They have much more offensively depth, deep team. If Matthew Beneers goes off, you know, he had nine points in 10 games, but how is that going to translate into 82? We don't know. 
yeah, it's uh, to right that uh, also is going to get a chance with Yanni Gord. This is a much more offensively balanced team than it was last year. Um, but where they could still use some work is on defense. And with Minnesota needing cap space long term, remember, this is more of a long term cap space for two, three years as they allow the Zach Parise and Ryan Suter buyouts to kind of go away. Also, I'd like to mention that I don't think that Bill Guerin, I'm starting to think Bill Guerin is a very uh, analytical general manager as well. And if he's looking at Dumba's analytics, they're not great. So that could be something that is in uh, in his mind too as he's looking to re-sign Matthew Dumba. But what could they give up in this situation? Um, I think they could do I think they could do William Borgen or Justin Schultz that they just picked up. Justin Schultz is is got what uh, two more years at three million, and you know he could fill a spot over at Minnesota in Minnesota at a cheaper rate than Dumba, which would help, still give them a defenseman back that is okay, just like Dumba is okay, but at half the price. Now, many would project, think that Dumba is better than, than Justin Schultz, just because of reputation alone, and possibly Francis does as well. Maybe he just sees something more. I mean, I would say that Dumba has better tools, physical skills, than Justin Schultz, but analytically they're both e both fairly equal. So he could definitely take a look at something like this. So Justin Schultz, William Borgen, and maybe somebody like Connor Geeky in a second round pick, or your 2024 first round pick. Again, this deal doesn't get made unless Seattle's in a playoff spot. And now you have an owner that's like. We have an opportunity to make playoff money right now. I ponied up a crap load for this team. I'd like to start putting some money in my pocket, making some money from my, you know, the initial investment. It's a lot of money to buy a team. And you're not really bringing in a ton until you start making the playoffs. If that's the case, I think it's possible. I think Dumba is a leader, is known as a leader in the room. That's everything I've heard for sure is he, from anybody who's ever played with them, is that he is a leader in the room. Um, so that could be huge for some a team that just lost uh, Jor Giordano and, uh, you know, brought in a guy like Justin Schultz isn't really the greatest leader to replace him. He's not really what you'd call a leader in the room, but he is. So he can replace that side of things. That wasn't there before. And if things work out, I wouldn't be surprised if Dumbo would happy be, be happy to stay in Seattle and help build this team into a contender for the future. So a deal like that could be worked out. A first-round draft pick in 2024. I think that's what Minnesota is going to be looking for, either a 23 or 24 pick and a right defenseman of some kind. Another thing that or, you could also go on the left side and put Gorgiev on the right and bring Susie back. They never really wanted to get rid of Carson Susie, anyways. And the funny thing was, is the reason why, one of the reasons why Seattle got Susie is they protected Dumba instead. So that would be interesting. I like that. Carson Susie uh, and a second round pick or Morgan Geeky in a second round pick or 2024. Would you do that Seattle fans to get, you know, a very fast, strong skating defenseman with leadership skills, some pretty good offense, not great defensively, but overall a physical package of a player that can be molded still at 28 years old. All right, next, the Florida Panthers. And I have them as the second team out of seven. Uh, but the reason why I have them is they are going to need to do something with their defense. Uh, I think it's just, I can't see how Stahl and Radko Gudas is going to do it. 
for a second pairing for an 82 game schedule. I just can't see it. Um, they, they've lost a lot when they lost Weir. No doubt about that. I still would have did the deal, and I've mentioned this several times before. Matthew Kachuk is a unicorn of a player. Like, impossible to find a guy who plays as good as he does two ways and, uh, and can put up the offense he does, plus his physical and all that stuff like that. We've been through that before. So the question is, what would the return be? Well, Dumba is an unrestricted free agent, as we've mentioned before. And uh, as we mentioned before. And so he can come off the bat books next year, which would co could possibly make him a rental here. Florida, their cap situation is not spectacular. Um, they actually are three million over the cap right now, and I'm not sure how they're going to get under the cap. This is one of the few teams where I look at it and go, "How is this all going to happen for them?" But I've seen teams before. Maybe they know somebody's going to go in the IR that we're not sure of, or whatever. Teams do this all the time before the cap. All of a sudden, voila, they're under the cap, and I'm sure they'll do it. But then you're going to say, "Well, how can they get?" Dumba if they're just barely being under the cap now. Well, this probably doesn't happen until the trade deadline or, you know, uh, an injury happens that allows them to have more cap before the trade deadline. And I think they trade Sam Bennett in this deal. One thing Minnesota could use when it comes to forwards, and I should have mentioned this before, is they could use a, tr a, 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 number, a true number one center. Is Bennett a true number one center? Maybe not. But he is a kind of physical type of two-way player that I know that Garen would really love. And it would give them an immense amount of depth up the middle until Marco Rossi is available to be what Marco Rossi is going to be. Now, of course, this would all go down and not happen at all if Rossi becomes out right now. If Rossi becomes the superstar that he is right now, the steal probably doesn't happen. There's no need for that. And I don't see a, I don't see another, besides maybe Brandon Montour. So you could go Brandon Montour and Sam Bennett so they get another defenseman in return. That would help the cap space completely but it still would depend on Sam Bennett. Now, if Sam Bennett doesn't have to be available, and you know, maybe Sam Bennett doesn't have to be available here. Brandon Montour and a first would work, except Florida doesn't have any firsts forever. I don't think this deal really can go down unless Bennett is available. Uh, possibly they could use some of their prospects to make it work, but really I think it's got to be Bennett. Tell me what you think, Florida Panthers fans. If you're going, would you be willing to take a guy who's a right defenseman? He can uh, play in Gudis' spot, move Gudis down. Uh, Montour can play left defense as well. Lucas Carlson can move up. Mark Stahl can be not in the lineup where it's where he probably should be. And uh, you've got defense that really I don't think that they are actually going to be able to do well in the playoffs with this defense. Make, make the playoffs, sure. In the playoffs, no. Personally, I'm not a big Dumba fan, but if you are, would you do this deal straight across pretty much for Sam Bennett? Subscribe to my channel on YouTube here and let me know, Florida Panthers fans. Next. The Boston Bruins. And uh, notice here I have it. The Boston Bruins at their uh, cap space page on cap friendly. Because this is interesting. I didn't even notice this. They're going for it this year. Right, Boston fans? You know, you bring back David Krejci. Marshawn's trying to get back by November. 
Bergeron's getting long in the tooth, 37 years old. We don't know exactly when he's going to retire. You got old guys like Felino, you know, it's it's an old team and it's a team that can see possibly the window closing very very soon. And I didn't even realize until I did this video how many UFAs they have next year. Basically, Boston can recreate their whole lineup next year. They've got Krejci, don't sign Krejci, don't sign Wagner, don't need to bring Noshik back. We don't know if Priest Bergeron is going to come back. Craig Smith is gone. Zaka, you know, they'll, they probably want to keep him. We'll see how he does this year. Felino gone almost assuredly or at a very lower, much, much lower rate. Surely you got to sign Pasternak, but they're going to, they're going to be able to recreate their whole forward group next year. And uh, I don't know which direction they're totally thinking of going to. Uh, they did sign Hampus Lindholm, who's 28 years old. Matthew Dumba is also 28 years old. And to tell you the honest truth, as although they have incredibly analytically strong players like Patrice Bergeron um, and David Pasternak, I think it's purely by fluke. To tell you the honest truth, I don't really think that they pay attention to analytics much in Boston at all. It's a very old school eye test type of thing because they they picked up guys like Charlie Coyle that were analytically terrible. Uh, all the physical tools, but never was really great defensively. However, I remember when they brought over Charlie Coyle, they described him as a two way forward. But he's not really good two ways. Uh, so that's that you get there's a, a bias that comes when a player is big and he doesn't put up great points and he runs around a lot in the defensive zone and hits people that he's good defensively. That's kind of like the old school way of looking at things, uh, looking at it. You know, he's willing to hit somebody and then scramble back and block a shot. There's a much better way to do it than that. You can actually just keep your lines and push the player to go into areas that you were not forced to block a shot. But anyways, that's another thing altogether. That's our new NHL, the way we have it now. And it, and it actually is correct. Uh, Colorado does it, for instance. That being said, a guy like Dumba, I think, would be something they would be interested in. Except all of this social media stuff and stuff. And that may be a problem here. But as far as on paper and what they would want... First of all, as a rental, I think they would be interested in somebody like Dumba to, to play on the power play uh, and fill out their top four to go for it this year. He's a fast skater. He's a good skater. He's got physical tools. He's not afraid to back down from anybody. All of those sort of things are things that it seems like the Boston Bruins at Brass really loves. Um, now they could sign him to a long-term contract somewhere in the area of maybe Hampus Lindholm that they've already done already. And you have, they have their defense lined up for quite a few years as they rebuild their forwards. I could see Boston doing this. Tell me if you could see Boston doing this. Now the return, I think the return could be somebody like Mike Riley. Uh, who is paid till 2024. Minnesota can afford Mike Riley at $3 million for the next two years. Um, and a first round in the, either a first round pick in 2023 or something like Oscar Steen and a second round pick in 2023. Something of that nature. Um, I'm not sure Minnesota would want a guy like Oscar Steen. They have a lot of forwards already. But I think it would be the first round pick. And at this point, I know Boston will have to rebuild this roster, but at this moment, they're looking to win now, 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 now. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Maybe you get away at the 2024 first. Let's say that. They are looking to win now, now, now. So I could see them doing something like this. Boston Bruins fans, could you see them doing something like this? Grizzly comes back. You know, you have Grizzlick and Dumba. That would be a nice combination, actually. McKinnon, or M 
Gibson and McAvoy, I should say, up there with Lindholm. And then you bring Carlo down here with Orbert, I guess. But your top four would be fantastic. Top four would be really good because I, I just think Grizzly and, and Dumbo would work well together. Grizzly is a very underrated defensive defenseman. Or, uh, very underrated defensive lead. And uh, I think he could help out Dumba. Also, Dumba's only 28 years old. There's a lot of room for him to become better defensively than he is. And he's got all the physical tools to, to really be much better than he is. That's the thing that's hard to watch with Dumba. Is he could be an exceptionally good defenseman with the physical tools and abilities that he has. It's just up in his head. He needs he hasn't it doesn't appear he's willing to or has been trained to play the defensive position on both ends of the ice the best you possibly can. And maybe Boston can bring that out to him. Subscribe to my channel, Boston Bruins fans, and let me know what you think of Matthew Dumba being on your team and the package that I requested or what you would give for a person like Matthew Dumba. Next, the Winnipeg Jets. And Winnipeg actually doesn't um, have, they've actually got $4 million in cap space and they've got a whole bunch of cap space seemingly coming up next year with uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois. Now it's up in the air whether he wants to stay in Winnipeg or not. His agent said otherwise. Now he says he could, he's open to the idea. It's really hard to tell. But um, let's put it this way. This team, if they're going to be successful, probably has to do something with their defense. And the Winnipeg Jets, as everybody knows, does not have an easy time bringing in free agents to Winnipeg. Uh, most of the time they try to find guys that are from like the Ontario area and, uh, you know, Winnipeg not being far from Toronto and all of those areas there that, uh, you know, the, uh, the players themselves can say, oh, I'm kind of close to home. Family could be there or whatever. They, they usually try to find something in that, with that scope. And, uh, Dumbas from Saskatchewan, Regina which is like right beside Winnipeg. Um, probably part of the reason why he really enjoys being in Minnesota too, because it's not far of a jaunt over there to Saskatchewan. So a player like this, um, it's somebody that can go to Winnipeg. So when you keep that in mind, you have a player that in this case, and I don't know totally, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, maybe he's from Saskatchewan and he hates Winnipeg. I don't know. I'm just looking at what is – could be logical. Probable is a better way of putting it. You have a guy who's six feet, somewhere around there. It doesn't matter his size. He plays big. He does play big. He's a great skater. He can skate the puck out of the zone very, very well. Kind of like what they had in Myers before. He's not great defensively, but he can play the power play. He's got a big shot. He's got all the tools that you want to see in a player, as I've mentioned before several times here. Um, and to work with them, maybe you can get them to be better defensively. I don't know. And this team needs right, right defensemen in a big, bad way. They got Dill they got Brendan Dillon going to be playing the left D, you know, uh, Dylan DeMello because they want to give Hinala a shot and Sandberg a shot. So with that being in mind, with that in mind, if Dylan DeMello is not going to be playing, Personally, for me, and I believe Garen is an analytics-driven guy, Dylan DeMello is way better defensively. He doesn't bring you offense at all. But at $3 million for the next two years, I don't mind playing him in my 5-6 spot. And Winnipeg does have cap space, so they can handle a little bit of cap space. You may not even have to retain here. And they can sign. They can sign him up for long term. This I almost actually think I should have put this as a number one. The more I'm talking about it now, I think it'd be a really good thing. Now I don't think Demello Demello is the only player that would go here. I do think it would have to be 
a first round pick in 2024. Um, you know, maybe Chaz Lucius, who has been playing pretty good in college, not huge points. Um, I think I think Minnesota would be pretty happy with that. However, they are kind of getting stacked up the middle right now. But to get a prospect of that level for Dumba and a right defenseman, uh, I think they would be happy with that. That might be an overpay. It really depends on how much Winnipeg thinks of, of Chaz Lucius and how much Minnesota thinks of Chaz Lucius. But the 2024 first and Ryan DeMello, Dylan DeMello, Let's say you go that. I just don't think that – I think the 2023 first would be off the table for Winnipeg, mostly because I don't think this team's going to be in a playoff spot. Now, you're saying, well, you know, if they're not going to be in a playoff spot this year, aren't they going to be rebuilding and they wouldn't do this at all anyways? Possibly. It would be less likely that they would do it if they weren't in a playoff spot. However, Winnipeg has such a difficult time getting players to go to Winnipeg to want to be there for a long time. They just might do it. Like, it's that difficult for Winnipeg. A player who's got all the tools, offensive, can skate the puck out of the zone, they can work with his defense or whatever the case may be, but he actually wants to be here, their ears perk up quite a bit. I can see them doing it. All right. Winnipeg Jets fans, what do you think of that? Matthew Dumba, the Winnipeg, which would be interdivision too, which would make it a little difficult, but... Maybe Minnesota's like, they, they've they liked Dumba for so long that maybe they're like, you know what, we got to do this guy a solid. If we can get him home, closer to home there, and he's happy there, why don't we just do that for him, right? And then Winnipeg could get a, maybe a sweet deal and only have to give up a second if they're, if they're planning on being nice. We see this happen a lot to players that have been really great to organizations and they work they, they want to show the rest of the players on the team that they're going to take care of you if you do things like Matthew Dumba did. If you love this organization, we'll love you back, and we, we're not going to treat you like a piece of meat. So it's possible that Winnipeg could even get it for uh, like a very sweet deal here. Okay, next, the Washington Capitals. And again, I have them here as... Uh, right in their cap space picture because, from cap friendly, of course, because, look at all the people coming off the books next year. I mean, they could still sign them, but Brown, Eller, Hathaway, Sheary, there's going to be a ton of cap space next year. And they most certainly got to rework this defense. And the thing about Minnesota is, or sorry, Washington is, they don't really have a lot of defensemen coming up that are like uh, this. Alexander Alexiev is interesting. They just signed that, or they just drafted Iorio. But besides that, there's nobody like banging down the door here to play on that to play on their defense for next year. And they're going for it. Like the, Washington is not waiting for next year or the year after. They 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 have any chance at all to make this roster better, they're going to use it. Well, interesting. They have Manth on the right side with Kuznetsov and Ovechkin. I like that. McMichael with Stroman Brown. Huh, interesting. And then TJ OCC. TJ OCC is kind of like scooping his way out there. But the, the thing is, is I don't think Washington has a chance, and they want to win a cup. I don't think there's much of a chance of them doing that with Nick Jensen on the right side on the second pairing. I just don't see it. Um, He's going to be a Rick Jensen or Nick Jensen, I should say, not Rick. He's going to be a right uh, or a uh, free agent at the end of the year, so you could include him in this deal. He doesn't bring a lot of value in the deal, but it works for cap space reasons. Maybe Minnesota retains half, and then Washington is giving whatever they can give. Their first round pick in two thousand twenty three, I think, would have to be part of this deal. Jensen, maybe a prospect of some kind, uh, like Joe Snively, or you know, not nothing spe like a, a B level prospect, and the 2023 first. And the reason why I have Washington up on the higher side of who may get Dumba here is because they 
probably would give up that 2023 first. I think they, I think they likely would. Uh, they're because they're going for it right now. Um, and I think it's going to be not like in the 20 area, maybe even 15. Like, I don't think Washington's going to be like way up in their standings come playoff time. I don't, but I still think they're going to go for it at the same time, which is the perfect team to trade with if you're trying to get a good pick. This 2023 draft is super deep. Uh, I think Minnesota will be smacking their lips to get a pick like that, and Washington just might be able to give it up. Uh, do I think it's a good idea? Another reason why I think Washington may do this is they also don't appear to be like pay attention. They got to me. Washington is probably the least analytic team out there, and mostly because the players that like you pick up a guy like Eric Gustafson, Trevor Van Riemsdyk, these guys are terrible. I hate to say it, I, like most of the reason why this team is good is almost by accident. Just because you have Ovechkin, Kuznetsov, they drafted all those guys and they rolled with it and they went with it. But they really seem to have sort of an old school idea. If you can skate and you're big, we want you. That's about it. Dumba can skate. He's not huge. He can play the power play. Washington loves them some power play, don't you know? And uh, he can play minutes in the top four. He can play minutes. He certainly has the lung capacity to play 20, 20 to 25 minutes a night. Him and Orloff can play together there with Carlson and Ferharvey, and it looks good on paper. I still don't think it's a great idea, but I think it's something Washington would do. I do. What do you think, Washington Capitals fans? Subscribe to my channel. And let me know if you would give up your 2023 first to make a go make a run with it with Dumba on your defense. Next, Ottawa Senators. Uh, yeah, I'm taking the Ottawa Senators here mostly because like all summer long they were in on the chicken deal in Arizona. It seemed like it. It was coming all over the place. They're going to take. They're looking at Chikra. They're looking at Chikra. They're looking at Chikra. Didn't happen. Uh, even Dorian mentioned that he wanted to add a player to their top six, which they did in Debrinkat, and they wanted to add a top six defenseman, which they really didn't. Uh, so that, I, I think it's very possible they're still looking towards doing that. However, they probably want to see how this team gels together. They, they did some unbelievable stuff getting Claude Giroux, and to bring that to make that top six at least on paper look pretty darn good. Actually, their top nine is if everything gels well, and they, they'll be able to score. The defense could be tough. Nick Holden, Saitsev, man, you know, Brandstrom had a much better year last year. Travis Hamanek is meh. You know, there, there's some issues on the defense here, but if they can keep themselves in it. I could see them possibly looking at a deal for Dumbo. Uh, now, what would go back in return? Well, they, they don't really need to worry about uh, cap space all that much. And believe it or not, I think they could finally, and I know Ottawa Senators fans are going to love to hear this, get Nikita Zaitsev out of there. Um, I think they could use him in this deal. He's probably... Zaitsev is probably good enough to be a five, for a 5-6 for Minnesota. He's making 4.5 until 2024, which would be less than what Dumba's going to make uh, after, after this. Because he's making $6 million now. He's probably going to make a little more in a long-term contract. Ottawa could sign him up if everything works out well. But as it is, and like has it been here in this, all of these, he could be a rental here. So. Maybe you don't want to give up that much. But if they're in a playoff spot and they seem to think that they can be and they want to go for it, they could give up Zaitsev and possibly the 2023 first. I mean, they gave up the 2022 first already. If they were willing to pony up that first, or maybe they could say a second and a guy like, you know, they have so many defensemen that are coming up right now, Christian Rubens or uh, Bernard Docker 
and that second becomes a first if they make it so far in the playoffs and all that kind of stuff like that. How about something like that? I could see that. You could do uh, if this, then that. And actually, you could do that for all of these. Since he is a unrestricted free agent at the end of the year. If he signs, then. Right? So, again, a lot of this would have to depend on where Dumpo would like to sign long term, too. He, he can tell his agent, these are the teams that I really would like to sign with long term after this. Anywhere else, you're just getting me as a rental. So. That's a possibility. With that in mind, I'm going to look at a team that I also think he may that Dumba would be interested in going to, and that quite possibly would be interested in Dumba. And this is my number one, number one. And this is assuming that they're going to be in a playoff spot, and that's the Vancouver Canucks. And I think they will be in a playoff spot this year. I really do. And honestly. This is probably the worst defense I've ever said that about. <laughs> that they're going to be in a playoff spot. They're not in a very strong division. Uh, right now, they're minus 2.7 over the cap, which, like I've said before, it's amazing how teams all of a sudden, poof, are under the cap. Uh, oh, I guess when Mike, they have one more year that they can use Michael Furland's 3.5. So they'll be under the cap once the season starts. Anyways, they did a lot of great things here in Vancouver, or very good things anyways, to their forward group in the offseason. And they're going to be relying heavy on this forward group, picking up Ilya Mikhaev, which they have. A, they're trying him on the right side right now. I just, honestly, he's a better left winger. But maybe he's good enough on the right that, you know, they're they're more comfortable with a guy like Pug Colson playing his match, playing that left side. I don't know. But, okay, look at their defense. Oliver ekman Larson and Tyler Myers. On, it's not even a great top two to begin with. Uh, for, for one thing, that should be Quinn Hughes up there. However, they're doing it. This is all based on matchups. Luke Shen with Hughes. Luke Shen shouldn't be anybody's top four ever. He's a right defenseman. And this is, I think he could be part of this deal. Just simply to have a player to go back. Minnesota would be kind of in a playoff spot, probably. They get a right defenseman to help them out through the, to make it in the playoffs. And they're getting return back from a player that they would get nothing for if they let him walk. It's going to be a very difficult spot for Minnesota. But I just have a feeling Garen is not going to let Dumba go for nothing. I just have that feeling. Because it's in Vancouver, I, have a, I also think that it would be not too bad of a spot for Dumba since he's from Saskatchewan when he's still in Canada. It's still Western Canada. And the other great thing about this is you're going to a team that believes it's on the up. They signed JT Miller. They have Horvat Peterson, or Pedersen, however they want to say it. Uh, that Kuzmenko guy they got from, we'll see how he turns out in the KHL. Pud Colson's going to be his Garland, Mikhaev. I mean, their offensive depth, Brock Besser, who I think will have a better year this year, is fantastic. And you have an opportunity to grab a top four spot that really there is little chance anybody's going to take you out of for quite a while. So I think there's a good chance that Vancouver could sign him long term here. Like I said, I'm not a big Dumba guy, and I don't know how much of a Dumba guy they will be, to tell you the honest truth. Um, to me, you're getting maybe too much of the same kind of player here with Hughes, Dumba. Myers, Ekman, Larson, who's going to play defense, right? Um, but if you're talking about Bruce Boudreau, high-pressure offense is the way he likes to play. That's why people love him. That's why players love playing for Boudreau. He likes to play a – his defense is to not let teams back into the defensive zone as much as you possibly can. He's a great possession coach that way. And – he can, you know, he has helped a lot of players become better defensively over the years. Actually, Tyre Myers last 
last year, Tyler Myers, became a lot better defensively under Bruce Boudreaux. So if they believe they can get that out of Dumba, who has all the tools to be still a stellar defenseman, I've said this over and over again, he just hasn't mentally been able to capture what it means to be a strong defensive defenseman as well as an offensive one, to be a true two-way defenseman. If they believe Boudreaux can get that out of Dumba, I think they do a deal like this. Shen and the 2024 first. I think it would be the 24 first. And if you're going to do the 24 first, Mills Hoglander sounds like he's not getting a spot in the lineup right now. He's the type of guy that Garen would like to experiment with and see what they can get out of. He's, he loves these kind of guys. Jost, you know, bringing in guys that are maybe not working out one place, bring them into Minnesota and see what we can do with them. So Hoglander, uh, Luke Shen, and the 2000, I think it would take a 2023 first with that package. And Vancouver is going to hum and haw over this, I'll tell you that right now. And it's really going to show what they are planning to do in Vancouver. Uh, it seems like they're not tearing anything down, that they're just going to try to build this defense as fast as possible. This would be one way to do it. Tell me what you think, Vancouver fans. Dumba in that package. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let me know if you would do that or something else, or if you would do it all or not at all or what have you. That's my full 42. Have a great day, everybody. Okay. Bye.